is yours and welcome back to the channel welcome back to Pokemon. No, we're not. No, <laughs> no it's not Pokemon, you dick. Welcome back to a Superhero Wednesday, the day of the week we like to get down, right down and nerdy and talk about all the weird and wonderful, beautiful, cool, nerdy shit uh, that we love so much. Nerdy shit do I love more than Spider-Man? Nothing. Spider-Man is the pinnacle of my nerdy shit. I adore that little bastard of the world of Spider-Man. Full stop. And uh, do you know what else I love? I love the Into and Across the Spider-Verse films, my number one and number two favourite films of all time. So I thought, do you know what? Let's take a look and uh, we're going to count down my 10 favourite spiders from the, the Spider-Verse film. Make sure I get that out there properly. It's not my 10 favourite spiders of all time. These are purely the ones from the Spider-Verse stuff because there's ones that will be higher on this list. There'll be ones that maybe aren't on this list and stuff. It would, it would, be, it would look like a different list if we were just talking spiders full stop in general. But no, my 10 favourite spiders from the Spider-Verse films. Please let me know your 10 favourite spiders in the Spider-Verse stuff, uh, your least favourites and whatnot. Uh, if, have they? Have you even had a look at your favourite spider? Or, uh, you know, what, let us know anything you'll know about these films and, and my 10 spiders and your favourite spiders. So visuals, let's shut the fuck up and get to spider and number one. One is Penny Parker. I adore Penny Parker. I uh, will admit that there's only so much I've read of her. I remember the uh, first Across the Spider-Verse stuff, you know, when all the spiders were being hunted and whatnot and seeing bits of her and, and stuff like that. And I've got a few variant, I'm trying to think of the top of my head now, which covers I've got. I've got a few variant artwork covers of her as well, which is also really, really cool. But I, I love her. You know, it's the, the Japanese anime sort of uh, style they're bringing into it all and whatnot. Plus her as a unique spider, having the, you know, the spider inside the robot and whatnot and it being a completely different take on how a spider should be. It's amazing. She's bloody adorable. Great character. My 10th favourite spider. Next up, it's Spider-Man India. I love the way they did him in this. I love the way he was voicing this. I love the way he's portrayed in this. I love the way he looked art style, especially when he was going around um, fucking... How do you say it again? Mumba... Mumba, Mumba Hatton? Mumba... Especially the way he's swinging about and stuff, it it just looked great. You really felt the embodiment of India and stuff. You know the noises and uh, the the beep and the traffic and the hustle bussy and the bu hustle hussy bussy hustle and bussy hustle and bustle and the the busy streets and stuff. Uh, and it, he was just done so great. I had a few giggles with him. He looked phenomenal. He was about to go off. Oh well, doesn't matter. Oh, and he was so beautiful. Up, uh, it's the Scarlet Spider, of course, played by oh, fucking Andy Samberg, Jake Peralta, Ben Riley. Absolutely phenomenal. If this was a regular Spider list, he would be further up. The only reason why he's not as far up in this is because we didn't get as much time with him. Um, but I still really enjoyed him. The way that he was all depressing, and the way that you know they made him say stuff, and he's like, "Oh, everything's pain and anguish and all that kind of stuff." Even the way he was funny until the point where Gwen eventually managed to get him, and you know to smash the device up and whatnot and, and take him out as a threat when uh, 29 takes a little team um, back to Miles' universe and stuff. But he's so funny in it and he's so great and to see anything Scarlet Spider related is amazing because traditionally, usually he would be in my top five, he, probably top three, potentially. Uh, top five without a shadow of a doubt. I absolutely adore him. To, to see him anyway was amazing. Little bit of bio in there, pushing him past uh, Penny in India, but Ben Riley, uh, the Scarlet Spider. Um, it's good old Spider Ham. This is purely because I'm an absolute man child. I am a moron. I love Spider Ham because I love the bigger and the sillier and the goofier and the weirder it is. I love it even more. So when I first years and years ago heard about Spider Ham and, and you know looked at Spider Ham, I thought straight away that's fantastic. That's amazing. I absolutely fucking love you. The fact that he's called Peter Porker and stuff is just amazing. My dumb little brain. <laughs> it's funny that. And it's hysterical. Plus, though, in the film, especially obviously in, in Into the Spider-Verse, because he's in it for 10, 15 seconds in Across the Spider-Verse. But in Into the Spider-Verse, he, he is hilarious. The way he's snotting, the way he's fighting, the way he's pulling out mallets and stuff. He's a great comedy character for the films. And I can't wait to see him in the next part in uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse. And how they, you know, because he's now on that Gwen team. And how they go, do what they do going forward with him and shit. But it's Spider-Ham. <laughs> Spider Punk absolutely adored this uh, pati uh, this particular portrayal of Spider Punk. He was phenomenal. He was relatively pivotal, and he was quite important to the growth of Miles and Miles eventually breaking out of Spider Man uh, Twenty Nine's trap and 
breaking away in that whole the chase sequence and whatnot. You know, oh, he was phenomenal. And again, the art style, the the blacks and greys, the craziness, the shock, and the moving of it all and whatnot. The the uh, true embodiment of punk rock in, in uh, uh, old school uh, London and all that kind of stuff. He was phenomenal, and he looked great. The way he interacted with his guitar and everything, the way he interacted with uh, Spider Man India or Gwen or you know who's the new guy and all that. He was phenomenal. I think everybody walked away from that film loving spider punk and it's a funko pop we need to add to our set but i think it's a i think it's an amazon exclusive Man noir uh this one again is a little bit of bias three but i do really enjoy him from uh into the spider verse but i loved him and it was it shattered dimensions the game I can't remember which game it was now you played as him as, but again, he's a, he's a Spider-Man with a, such a great, unique story and, and how he is, you know, the fact that it's constantly always like the blacks and the dark greys and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he carries a gun. It's like a detective drinking alcohol kind of uh, shenanigan going on. The, even the outfit itself being all dark and with the hat on and the trench coat and shit. It just looks amazing. Plus, noir-inspired stuff is always fun and always great. I do kind of like them them sort of stories when they tell them. So to have a, a noir environment with the lead character being a spider is just as great oh what was the name of the game now you take on hammerhead on that don't you fuck not sh uh, beyond t beyond ah oh, fuck it was years ago i remember playing deadpool's a villain on one of them i can't remember but spider-man noir and as well beautifully voiced by the legend that is nicholas cage it's Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara. Uh, he would make my top five traditionally, normally, anyway. Fucking outstanding. I understand that some people might not uh, completely love him at the end of the film because of how much he wants to stop Miles and uh, try and keep everything. But obviously, he's doing everything because he believes it's for the great good to stop everywhere collapsing to allow these canon events to keep continuing so nothing's completely fucked up in the whole grand scheme of everything but I, I've always loved Miguel O'Hara I love that again just like Noir and like a lot of uh, um, Ham and stuff he's very unique in terms of you know what his powers are how intelligent he is what part of the like you know the world he comes from being it from Nueva York and a futuristic New York and stuff like that his suit itself slightly different you know Blades the vampire aspects and all that kind of stuff it is phenomenal he looks like a fantastic spider I love the way they sort of grab, uh, cap, capture and point. I am pointing to the Funko, but you can barely fucking see. You can just, just about see. Uh, oh, where am I going? You can, there, my fingers on him. Uh, the way they chose him is a bit more. His uh, his face and the red is a bit more sharp and sleek, where it's a bit more smooth in the comics and whatnot. But he is outstanding. <laughs> it is go Gwen, 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 Gwen. yes i love her so much she's one of my key components to the second film when uh i've said it before loads of times you, you know the self-love song which go for the train and that i break down it just kills me i absolutely love her Haley steinfeld does such a great job at bringing this particular gwen uh ghost spider spider gwen um to life and she's just phenomenal in it plus you feel a bit of heartbreak for her anyway because miles feels like she's he, she's been betrayed by her but she, again on the kind of like miguel she feels like she's it's kind of has to be done and she's doing what should be done and all that kind of stuff and it, she's just got such a beautiful story to tell inside of the, the spider-verse stuff and it, she is just a beautiful looking character i love the outfit of the white and the black and the ballerina-esque sort of type with the shoes that she wears and whatnot Oh, and it's so, and the drumming moments at the start of the second film where she's smacking or smacking away on the drums and shit. It's just so amazing. And I, I love her as a character and I love everything about her. But yeah, she's she's a key component of these spider films uh, going forward. And she's my third favourite. <laughs> up it is peter b parker i don't know how much of this one is massive bias tree because i adore new girl i adore nick my favorite character from new girl and i adore jake johnson that plays nick from new girl that also plays peter b parker but i adore this peter parker slightly older slightly a bit more uh, evolved and moved on the dad bod coming in the family life you know starting especially in the one in the second film bringing his kid along to the fights and whatnot it's so cool and it's so great to see this this uh, peter parker that peter b parker but this version of peter parker is bad back and he's sort of like oh hang on a sec kid and all this kind of stuff he's had all these it's kind of like in a weird way Banaflex batman that when we're introduced to him he's already gone through all these major experiences and when we see this peter b parker he's already gone through these major experiences but i love the little bastard and i think he's amazing and he's voiced beautifully and again sympathize with him I, I know that he you know 
does the kind of thing that Miguel does and uh, and Gwen, but he thinks he's different for the right and stuff. But <sighs> yeah, poor Miles, they're all against him, aren't they? I don't know what I was gonna say there. I lost. It. I love seeing him in his dressing gown as well and stuff. But Peter B. Parker is my second. Shock! Lo and behold, number one. Who is it? It's Miles Morales. This Miles Morales on, on his own, anyway, is phenomenal. Is amazing. Is outstanding. I have his debut fucking issue um, in the comics. I'm not in there. They're in the comic book. I think they're in the wherever it is in my box. But this particular Miles is just as good. It is fucking flawless i have never fallen in love with a character so quickly because i was already in, in love with miles and i was i already loved him as a character but i fell in love with him even quicker when i watched the into the spider verse stuff of who he is and implementing his um his life and his love of stuff you know hip-hop and all that kind of stuff into his costume and into his character then his his de determination to, to become the best spider he can be and to do what he can do and try and balance because peter parkers and stuff and you know they're always trying to balance life and uh the spider stuff and thing it wanted to see it through him you know he's a kid going for college and it was scoring and heading up to college and I, just seeing the whole story unfold with miles and then now seeing him feel like he's been betrayed by the girl that he really likes and the, the person that helped train him and all these other people people that he thought was a big influence seeing him being betrayed by that and it's like oh what are you going to do now then seeing him face to face with himself uh, as the prowler miles Morales at the end of the, the uh, across the spider verse it's, it, it, everything about him in this is fucking flawless and he's voiced beautifully stupidly perfectly beautifully uh, i don't know if you can say them in them sort of thingies but miles Morales, my favorite spider in the spider verse films and then we have visuals my favorite spiders in the spider verse films please let me know yours in the comments below you think of my list uh, i can't get over how much i love these films i know spider-man's my biggest thing in the world i'm always going to love them i'm going to be a little bit biased and whatnot but for me they really are perfection like they are 10 out of 10 films They're just so flawless for me that is you no know, let me let you know let me know know what you think of my list and um let me know what you think of the films and if you've not seen them yet or if you don't really like i don't know scarlet or spider ham or whoever just let me know whatever you want let me know about the world of spider-man visuals or let me know anything let me know how well your day is going visuals thank you so much for watching you guys are literally the freaking best remember to always keep being you and keep on all web slinging on